for this, when I asked about traditional media and gatekeeping, all the people I interviewed said, yeah, traditional media is still the gatekeepers. They are making the decisions about what's important to the government in public policy. This, as I say, I interviewed them before the Senate expenses and the, and the uh, Rob Ford situations. Um, and uh, this is Kenny Young. Kenny is uh, managing editor at Huffington Post, but he spent all of his career, about 20 years, in uh, uh, websites and social media for um, traditional, before he got to Huffington Post, he was at the Globe and Mail, responsible for their digital edition, that kind of thing. So I thought he said it well. A lot of people pointed out that it's the traditional media that have the professional journalists. Right? And still, uh, one person I talked with, uh, he's, um, that he's uh, now in public relations, was at the Toronto Star for many years. What he pointed out, his, from his point of view, is that, uh, uh, Fred Kuntz, is that um, the blog sphere and the social media it's the traditional journalists that are, are doing the, the analysts, uh, the analytical work, and, and then it's all in the social media. They're all opinions, and they're, basic, and they're talking about what the journalists, the traditional or um, trained journalists are talking about, but you know, that's the kind of, uh, at that level. They're not doing primary uh, investigative journalism at that level. Ooh, look at that. Okay, um, Lisa Kamel, and you may have heard this if you've been related to Edelman already, because I know this is a sort of a corporate um, stance. Um, they see the traditional media uh, as part of a shamrock, and, and owned media being their own products, the company's own products, social media, and they called uh, hybrid media or aggregator, like Google News, things like that. They see these as the four um, uh, parts of communications uh, external. So. Um, the other thing I had, and it was in my study, uh, Edelman has a global uh, study they do on credibility, media credibility, that's out. Uh, and I had the results, uh, not only global, but also for Canada, um, just from January. It was published in January. Uh, it really gets down to own media is now essential. It's not a nice to have anymore. You have to do it. Um, and this is what John Crean said. Everybody's saying, you have to have that direct connect with your stakeholders. You have to be able to provide all of that. I mean, what I say is the website now is like a company having a telephone number, right? It's kind of basic. Um, this is just one from Graham Fox, uh, again, sort of echoing that about how essential it is now that we have owned media. Now, the question about credibility for owned media, as you saw it was kind of middle of the road and company websites maybe even lower, is, is, is there an opportunity for our owned media to gain that kind of credibility? Now a lot of the journalists I talked to, uh, they weren't as kind as Kirk. Uh, a lot of them said, um, uh, ain't gonna happen, uh, it's just uh, some, uh, Chris Waddell, who's the head of journalism at uh, Carlton, he said, he was, he was really dismayed. He said, there's a lot of companies now, they have all kinds of money, they hire the former journalists that aren't working, who produce owned media that is really fabulous. I mean, it's very expensive, but it's fabulous. It looks as good as any traditional media, he pointed out. He said, but they're not asking the hard questions. They're, they're, they're given the same kind of coverage, but they're not asking the questions that traditional media would, would ask. Um, so. Um, but Kirk pointed out, he said, you know, if owned media is transparent, it says this is our bias, um, yeah, it's got potential to ha gain credibility, to earn credibility. Uh, John Kuchanks, who's the publisher of the Toronto Star, uh, on this issue, he, he said, um, here's a diff. Traditional journalists and traditional media, they're out to serve the public. That's their, who they're answering to. The owned media, has to serve its supporter, its uh, sponsors, right? Who's supporting it? So there is where he saw the credibility difference. And then this is a, this was one of the series I looked at. Is it's called? I'm going to say it wrong because I always do. It's called homophilia, and what it means is people like people that think like them. 
And, uh, and so there's, and I found that too in my interviews, that if people would say, well, you know, the internet, I don't know, you know, I don't believe everything, but you know, I, I, I go regularly to some sites I think are fabulous, right? The Twitter I follow is great. The blogs I read, they're wonderful, but blogs overall, eh, you know, not sure about that. Uh, and about third party uh, credibility. Um, yeah, I had to let Kirk say this. <laughs> I couldn't resist. Um, it's still important. People need that validation of, of it coming from someone else, the testimonial kind of thing. So my conclusions. Media relations, still important strategic part of our communications plans and part of what we do. Traditional media now is one of several gatekeepers. They authenticate what the agendas that are going to be set for public policy. And the media sphere is widened. Um, but they've got the audience right now and uh, trustworthiness and credibility. So our best practices, two areas. We have to maintain all the fundamentals we always did. We have to develop new understandings and skill sets. Um, those fundamentals, no one in this room, this won't be a surprise to anybody here. Um, Storytelling is very important, uh, having the overall strate uh, strategy relationships, and, but we also have to adopt all the new practices. We have to have own media. Um, we have to roll with the punches on the changes in media. And what was pointed out, especially by some of the, um, the policy people I talked to, is they say, we should have a more global perspective on things. Look for diverse views. Um, a couple PR managers said, um, I really want my communications people to be demanding and questioning what they're working with. Don't just handle it and say it's okay. Look at it and look at it from different points of view and, and make sure that all the questions have been answered. Uh, so from Sandra Buckler, who was uh, Director of Communications in uh, Stephen Harper's office for a while. Said, she said, uh, I don't like people who come up and meet me uh, for the first time and then ask for a favor, right? She wasn't talking to me. I knew her beforehand. <laughs> and she's a Mac grad, actually. Um, but that's, I think, what she said. She wants, everybody wants to be remembered. And Anne McClellan, who is a former cabinet minister in the Liberal government, said, made the point about being, pers uh, having that global perspective on issues. This. So, my appreciation for uh, my work, uh, Philip Savage, who you saw on Terry's uh, uh, acknowledgements as well, he was my capstone supervisor, and one of our professors, Dave Schultz, is at Leger Marketing. Um, Terry, who I have to thank for two things. This is, you're gonna think this is funny. The reason I got into the MCM is because Terry, some, I was out of journalism a couple of years in PR, and Terry said I didn't qualify to go do the MCM. So there I had to do it. <laughs> and then last year, he told me nobody cares about cre credibility, media credibility. So I, of course I had to do the study. <laughs> and I also want to thank Alex, who's the current director of the program. Yeah, as Lou says. <laughs> Oops. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Any questions? The Edelman barometer in your study, and in terms of, you said you looked at it. Yeah. It, when, in terms of traditional media, they often sort of downplay or feel that it's kind of out there. Yeah. How yeah. It no, it came up high, actually. It, um, what it said is globally, uh, if I look through my notes here, I probably do have, I think I wrote it down for it's myself. Yeah. But what they said was uh, traditional media is still at the top, right? And it ranked it the same. Right? It said globally it's tighter though. I mean, traditional media and um, uh, uh, Google News, things like the aggregators like that, are, or no, search engines, it was internet search engines, are about the same. And uh, then it goes down, it was like this. But then they looked at Canada, and in actual fact, it was like this. With traditional media uh, much higher, and the uh, social media and blogs being uh, much lower in Canada as opposed to world global. Uh, so it was a very interesting uh, contrast. But it did echo some of the other work I looked at on Canadians and our readership and our viewership and that kind of thing, that we are different from what's happening in the States, a little bit. 
Yeah. Heather? That was just great work, uh, Susan. Oh, thank you, Heather. So, you know, she walks across the stage and gets her diploma on Tuesday. Tuesday, that's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah thank you. I was interested in your opinion early on in your presentation. You talked about how digital media is reconfiguring things, including mm -hmm. our values. Mm -hmm. And then you also talked about how um, social media or other uh, digital sources are urging us to think about things in a different way. Do you believe that? I mean, do you, you know, on one hand you're saying traditional media is still present and accounted for, and then on the, other, on the other hand, it sounds like we're moving, you know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of shaping and forming. Wow, you've given me this great opportunity to make a point that I didn't put in this, but I just loved. And that was one, um, I did talk to one person, uh, of the 18 people I talked to, 17 let me use their name, only one said no. But this is a person who was both a, a former uh, MP, senior MP, and he's uh, in our trade now, in a senior level. And what he pointed out, which I thought was really interesting, was that nowadays, social media doesn't cut it. You think can be involved in social media, but it's only when it gets picked up by the traditional media that everybody becomes aware of it. So, you know, if somebody's sophisticated, if you're sophisticated about your social media, you can get it to kind of rise above the line and get the traditional media um, accepting it and then it, it flies everywhere. And I thought it was an awfully good point, just that. You know, there's a lot of going on, but it's when the traditional media picks it up. Um, and uh, in our local area, in the Hamilton area, that was really obvious uh, with the um, uh, uh, Tom Bosma, the, uh, a man who uh, went uh, on a test drive with his truck a few weeks ago and was ended up, he was murdered. But the first about that was the whole family and, and his church and everybody set up a really active social media. And then it was, when that got really active, then it got in, into the traditional media. Yeah. Yes, Terry. So if Gawker by itself said yes. video yes. Rob yes. Ford, yes, would have anybody have listened? Have, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the fact that the star. Yep. Who would have lawyered it? Right. Right. So, so social media or new social platforms still yeah. need the credibility of the traditional yeah. media yeah. to say that what they do is yeah. equal. Yeah. I think I've thought of that myself, Terry. I mean, uh, you, uh, Gawker is U.S. It's American. If they'd come out and say we have a video on the Friday or Friday, I think it was. I remember that whole weekend, CBC, every newscast talked about we haven't seen this video, but the Toronto Star says, right? It's alleged that. But every time they mentioned it, they said, you know, we haven't had the opportunity to validate this. The Toronto Star says, and Gawker say. It. Right, and uh, so uh, a lot of it's, uh, I, I see that as a, a great example of this. Alex? It's not the same thing with Julian Assange, right? You wrote about it. I've got you in my paper, actually, oh, really? and what you said about this. <laughs> yeah. He tried to go to social, social media only, and yeah. nobody listened. Yeah. And it was when he put together a consortium of, of top newspapers that, uh, that he finally yeah. got. Yes, once he went to The Guardian in the U.S., or in the in U.K., and then uh, Washington Post, was it, in the, in the States? And once they started to publicize it, yeah, it got lift. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Susan. That's a very interesting research, and I think very timely, given the pace of change in traditional land. Social media. Record? <laughs> Go on record. With <laughs> thank, you. thank you very much. You're uh, thank you to everybody who. Uh, for just a very quick thank you to everybody for coming and uh, participating in our research presentation this morning. And thank you very much to our two presenters. Very interesting research and uh, certainly very impressive work. And um, please be in touch. You can feel free to email me or talk to other members of the Education Council if you have ideas for how this session might uh, expand and grow in future. And keep your eyes uh, peeled because next year we will send out another call for uh, research and presentations. And if you're working on uh, projects and you would like to be part of this, um, we'd, we'd be more than happy to see your work. So thank you very much. Thank you.